Super Talk Mississippi media production. Discover the Copaya Advantage. Copaya County is a Mid-South gem with a spirit of opportunity, a business-friendly environment, and access to major transportation networks. Copaya County, let's do business. Visit copayaworks.com today and discover the Copaya Advantage. Hello there, I'm Paul Gallo and welcome to another edition of Mississippi Magic. In any episode of this podcast, it would be dishonest and unrealistic to even convey that the pathway to immortality in any endeavor was paved with fairy dust. For this youngster who grew up in a time of Mississippi racial strife and poverty, the storms hit every single day. Mary Mary, quite contrary, and her amazing journey of just how maybe that Mississippi magic had a helping hand in eventually bringing some sunshine to a life of continuing storms. This edition of Mississippi Magic is called The Music Contrarian, and that story unfolds next after this. Thank you to our sponsor, a family-owned Mississippi company that's built their implement business on exceptional service over 50 years. One customer at a time. We are proud to have Divinity Equipment in Jackson and Highway 51 North in Madison presenting Mississippi Magic. I sat down with Jonathan at the Madison location on 51 North the other day. We talked about the journey over the years of both Divini Equipment and and the industry leader, Kubota. Both of those names now at the top of the list in providing quality and service. Look, if you're in the market for anything from an excavator to tractor, top-of-the-line quality with state-of-the-art innovation and service, you can't do better than my friends at Divini Equipment and Kubota. And I've got to mention that right now, you can make a little Mississippi magic happen yourself by turning that dull mowing chore into a comfort cruise with very special prices from now through the end of June on those incredible zero-turn Kubota mowers. Come see us. Divinity Equipment, Highway 51 North in Madison and Jackson. Great people, great products. Now back to the Music Contrarian. In 1944, when Mary was announced upon delivery to Sam and Johnny May, as their firstborn. Mississippi was a land of hard knocks for anybody poor, especially black Mississippians. In the Mississippi Delta, a young black child's statistical chance of achieving the American dream depended on two things, surviving to adulthood and escaping the chains of poverty. In this case, eventually the stress of two more siblings took its toll on the family and their future. One morning she wakes up and finds an unusual scurry, certainly not typical of a Delta morning. Without a full explanation of why or when or where, the family packed all their meager belongings and left behind the place of her birth, a dirt yard bordered by a field of white cotton in the fall and barren stalks in the winter. It was a bit scary, but in that fear was a bit of excitement also that the new land where they were going might be a place where her frequent heartfelt questions to her mom would elicit an answer of yes for once instead of no. You see, a black youth in those trying times had to be taught by their parents an additional curriculum for survival that others didn't. That survival course was based on the color of their skin and what they were and were not allowed to do. Since it wasn't a natural instinctive part of growing up as a child, those lessons came with a lot of questions. There were many times Mary would ask to do something most children would do, and her mom would say, no. She naturally, as a child, would ask, Why can't I do it? And in a voice that echoed a generational answer, almost as if it were a normal response, her mother would say, because you're black. No wonder a bit of hope was packed along with her few worldly possessions on a road to somewhere in a different land where she could maybe, just maybe, hear her mom say, yes. But what Mary found out that the storms in St. Louis were just as strong in some cases even worse because those storms happened in unfamiliar new surroundings and with little work to feed those hungry mouths. But this little Mississippi girl was, what's the word? Contrary. Always asking why. Why was being black a reason to say no? And there were lots of no's. So much so that in her tender years as a child, the family made a heartbreaking decision that they just couldn't feed all three and at the same time survive. So they moved from St. Louis to Chicago to Detroit, where they had relatives. And then one early morning after they had moved to Motor City and had a come-to-Jesus meeting with family, 
Mary heard her mom say the words again that she thought would be left behind in Mississippi. When it was decided there was no way to feed all three kids, her aunt and uncle agreed to take the oldest into their home in Detroit until some security was established. After tears and pleas asking mom to let her stay with her brother and sister, Mary heard her mother say once again, no. But her mom did promise to reunite with her firstborn just as soon as the family had some financial footing. And with her job as a housekeeper, she made good on that promise by the time the quite contrary little girl reached the mature age of nine. Well, the family united once again, moved to a Detroit housing project in a life that for the first time brought some modicum of stability and a chance for the quite contrary little girl in a nearby elementary school to dust some dreams with Mississippi magic. And that she did. As a matter of fact, it was one of those childhood friends in that elementary school that would change her life and in the process, the entire music industry. Little did the world know back then, but this Mississippi-born, determined young lady would become part of a legendary group reaching unimaginable heights and superstardom never seen before. As they spent time together, both girls knew they could sing. So much so, they entered the school's talent contest as a duo. <laughs> that caught the attention of everyone. At 15 years old, Mary wasn't accepting the word no any longer. Her friend asked her one day to go to an audition. Audition? What audition? Her friend Flo informed her that it was being held by Milton Jenkins. <laughs> That's right, little Milton. She didn't need to hear anything else. The answer was yes, even before and after her mother once again said no. Seems little Milton was in the process of adding a girls group to his male ensemble. When the auditions were over, she had no idea how it went. Until Milton told her Mary was one of the three new members to his new group. Now, Mississippi Magic was kicking into high gear. But of course, there was this ever-present word, no, and it would be heard again. This time, a bit different. You see, upon graduation from high school in 1962, her mom's dreams for her was that she be the first to attend college, a dream that her mother had invested in countless hours of scrubbing floors and cleaning toilets in other people's homes. It wasn't easy. But the new high school graduate told her mother with the certainty and commitment of one a lot older, no. She pleaded, but Mary, Mary quite contrary, stood her ground. Mom reversed the conversation by asking why. And the answer to that question would be recorded for all history to hear with an amazing list of seven hit singles, reaching millions on radio stations and TV performances across the country, across the world, in just the first three years of performing. Oh, it was a tumultuous ride. First starting out as a female version of Milton Jenkins' Primes by performing as the Primettes. Then another name change and trio change that ultimately launched the group to become international superstars. By this time, the legendary Barry Gordy was in charge. And to be honest, the joy of performing became overshadowed by the brutal side of the business itself. More storms. Another name change, more disputes, and yet another member of the trio leaves. And through it all, Mary Mary, quite contrary, was determined to survive. And she handled each new storm by simply not taking no for an answer. Those storms also included a final settlement on her behalf in a David and Goliath battle for a long and arduous legal battle with Motown that changed the music industry. The music history records that the Mississippi-born superstar fought two more court cases for the right to use the group's famous name. Why? Because she was not only a founding member, but in the latter years the only original member left. Now that lawsuit and her dogged support of something called the Truth in Music legislation changed the industry forever. With its passage, all of the famous groups that performed decades later could use the original name that made them famous as long as one original member was still performing. The music industry is better off because Mary Mary was quite contrary, and she dug in and weathered those many, many storms. For that, the superstar's name will forever be part of music history as one of the greatest female groups ever in all of music. From her Delta roots all the way to the top of the charts of music immortality, Mary withstood it all to be the longest and last member of one of the greatest singing trios in music history. She outlasted them all, including her childhood friend Flo, Florence Ballard, or later Betty McLowan, Barbara Martin, Cindy Birdsong, Jean Terrell, 
And yes, even someone named Diana Ross. And that was a supreme accomplishment. That Mississippi-born legend left the cotton fields of the Delta to harvest a record number of awards, such as one of the greatest female groups of all time, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, several highly distinguished Lifetime Achievement Awards, and numerous Grammy nominations. And still today, the little girl who came from a shotgun house on the edge of a cotton field in the Mississippi Delta continues to dazzle audiences wherever she goes with her incredible story and her nothing less than supreme success is forevermore recorded in music history. How fortunate for millions upon millions of fans worldwide that Mary Mary was quite contrary. Mississippi's very own Mary Wilson, Greenville, Mississippi, the legendary member of the Supremes. Our day will come and we'll have everything. Diane Flo and I started singing in 1959. You know, we were like 13 years old. We signed with Motown when, when we were 16. We had our first hit record when we were about 19 years old. It was wonderful, but we worked very hard. You know, looking back now on how did Mary Mary, quite contrary, fight through all those storms and all those no's? Well, maybe, just maybe, Mary Wilson, born in Greenville, Mississippi, made it through all those storms by saying yes to a little Mississippi magic. <laughs> Super Talk Mississippi Media Production.